This week, we talk about the mysteries of Mount Shasta, the most paranormal location on planet Earth. Hello, and welcome back to the Swerve Podcast. It's your co-host, Izzo. I'm also joined here by Magnum. What's up, everybody? If you're a first-time listener and you're wondering what you've stumbled across, we are the Swerve Podcast, and we are two random dudes on a mission to understand everything in the universe, one obscure topic at a time. So our premise here is very simple. Every week, we pick a listener-requested topic, then we research it and discuss it on the fly during the podcast. So this week, we're going to be talking about Mount Shasta, which some crazy things are happening there. But before we get into that... Izzo, I believe you have some words. I do. Right off the top, we have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash the Swerve Podcast. And simply put, there's two tiers. There's a $1 ride the wave tier. So that's three cents a day. And that'll give you access to all the bonus episodes that we release. It'll also give you the access to the library of episodes that we've released so far which is quite extensive. And then for $3, you can join the slap the ass tier and you'll get access to those bonus episodes. But you'll also receive all the episodes, both main and Patreon, a few days before anyone else. So you'll receive them on Sundays rather than the typical drop time of Wednesdays. Now, we do have a tradition on this podcast before we get into the main episode. Izzo, would you continue to enlighten the listeners? Yeah, the tradition is that we like to drink during the recording of these episodes. And usually we like to take listener recommended drinks, maybe try some cocktails out or just keep it basic depending on how much time we have. So we'd like to do a quick round table. I'll start. I'm not drinking this week. So I have a diet ginger ale here. Oh shit. A diet ginger. What is it? It looked different. It's It's just a a white can. can, Canada dry ginger ale. Oh, it's probably the best diet version of a pop that tastes like it's original so it's quite good i made a listener requested drink today this is from a former patreon loyal listener rex ruger he had a drink he calls it edna's lunchbox i (laughs) guess it's like have you heard of it before no i haven't okay so i don't know if it's a real thing or if it's like kind of like a local thing i kind of got the vibe it was a local thing but really all it is it's um one part beer coors light or whatever you want to one part orange juice and then one shot of amaretto so i did like three ounces orange juice three ounces beer and a shot of and one ounce amaretto and then i i took it to the next level actually i made it kind of into a slush i put it in the freezer for about just before the episode, probably like 45 minutes. And yeah. it like just perfectly slushed it. So it's mm-hmm. like, it's actually a delicious drink. I'm shocked at how good this is. So shout out to you, Rex Ruger. Yeah, that sounds like it would be bad. But if you're saying it's good, I'll, I'll I know. have to try it eventually. I thought it was going to be bad because it's one of those drinks where you just kind of like grab shit and throw it in. It's like, yeah, you know, really, it's like, like kind of like yeah. ghetto style, like shit, like. Yeah, I find that like mixing anything with beer just tastes like shit. So I'm surprised (laughs) that this doesn't. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's you got a lot of sugar in the orange juice. You get the amaretto. It's got the sweetness. It kind of overpowers the the beer. Or sorry, this isn't Coors Light. This is it's even worse. It's uh, old Milwaukee is the beer I use. (laughs) (laughs) And it's still good. It's still good. So anyways, we can let's hop into the basics here. So before we start today's episode, this was actually a recommendation from our loyal Patreon, Spurgelicious Asshat. He recommended this. And I mean, at this point, Spurgelicious is essentially like a producer of the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) And it's great. We uh, keep the topics coming. We like them. Well, we're going to keep doing them. But today, Mount Shasta, this is kind of like a grab bag of every conspiracy, in my opinion. This is like... It's got aliens, it's got UFO sightings, mysterious disappearances, interdimensional portals, ghosts, underground bases, spirits, hidden cities of advanced beings, uh, the lost continent of Lemuria, um, and like global power, like a global power hideout, and of course, uh, lizard people, reptile (laughs) shit. 
so like essentially it's like it's got it all it has every everything from that genre i would i would say yeah located in good old america too exactly it's kind of been touted as a site of an energy vortex that allows passage into like a metaphysical dimension it's the birthplace of a spiritual foundation whose adherents believe they can ascend to the eternal realm and it's like a hot spot for ufos it's located in northern california in siskiyou county california and it's actually a decently sized mountain the elevation is 14,179 feet or 4,322 meters for the non-american listeners and fellow canadians and it's what's nice about this forest you can see it in the cover art if you go look on our uh, social media pages it's it's like a mountain, but it's not a part of any other mountains. So it's completely surrounded by a forest. So like it looks incredible because, you know, like other mountains are like, usually there's a mountains. It's like a mountain range yeah, and shit. This is just like one mountain, like in a forest. It's kind of cool. Hmm. It's the second highest mountain in the Cascade range and the fifth highest in California. I believe the first highest is Snoop Dogg. <laughs> that's that's Snoop Dogg. <laughs> ha ha. Welcome to the Swerve Podcast. Um, we're here. <laughs> so it has potential. It's a potential active volcano as well. So in 2022, some lava oozed out and started some fires. So like it's actually like erupting shit, but there hasn't been a major eruption since 700 years ago. But I guess it's like active. It must be active. I don't know how it can be potentially active if there's lava starting fires. Yeah, must not be sure active. how that works either. Yeah, even though we did a super volcano episode. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Experts, Patreon, find it there. So I have a weird true fact um, about Mount Shasta. The entire area of Mount Shasta is blanketed by an enormous negative magnetic anomaly. So people who study like geomagnetics and stuff, there's like some weird magnetism in this area. And this is real. This is not like conspiracy. This is like, I don't know where they call it, geophysicists or geologists, perhaps. I don't know. Yeah. Someone measured it. I was interested by this, so I just did like a quick search on it. And I didn't know this, but it's not uncommon for mountainous areas to exhibit irregular magnetic fields. Uh, and that's due to the variations in the Earth's crust and the presence of magnetic minerals. So it can affect like compass readings and navigation, but they're typically not harmful to hum human health or well-being. So, yeah, I didn't know that. Well, we'll see. We'll <laughs> see as we get through this. One thing that's crazy about this mountain, it's so steep that it has its own weather. So it can create, or sorry, not that it has its own weather. It can create its own weather. Obviously, it would have fucking weather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no weather there. The magnetics. <laughs> but you get these like strange lenticular cloud formations and... A lenticular cloud, like basically just looks like a UFO. So maybe that, just keep that in your back pocket for later when we start talking about stuff. You get these like strange clouds. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it. It's like, it just essentially looks like a very thin, flat disc shaped cloud, but it's massive and it's like just above the mountain. Yeah. I saw a picture of it. It does look very odd, especially like if there's no other clouds in the sky except over this mountain. Uh, it looks kind of weird. But about the uh, weather thing, um, so another thing that happens, it's called orographic lift, and it's common, again, for mountains. And it's just like uh, the air rises rapidly, it cools and condenses into clouds, which then can result in precipitation. And especially for Mount Sash Sashta, uh, Shasta. The loca yeah. <laughs> uh, located near the Pacific Ocean, um, it contributes to the weather as well. And... Sometimes it's not uncommon to like have snowfall levels with some receiving like 12.7 meters of snow per year, just in like this area. Before we hop out of the basics here, there's, I, there's 
a quote I have from a non-believer that lived near Mount Shasta. And in lieu of all this UFO, can, like people are like, oh, there's UFOs, there's spirits, it's paranormal, there's people living under the ground. This is what this guy, he just, this is what he had to say. He said the following, quote, We're a normal town. We have a hospital. We have a grocery store. End quote. So the locals just think that it's normal. Yeah. Which is crazy. Hmm. But we'll see. We'll see. Is it really? Is it really a grocery store? I don't know. Do once they we get... really have a grocery <laughs> store? Yeah, once we get into like the weird stories, it's kind of hard to expect it to just be a normal town. Like a normal town is drug busts and bank robberies, not <laughs> people getting abducted and yeah. UFOs and other weird shit that we'll get into. Yeah, a normal town, you get pepper sprayed when you're walking down the main <laughs> street. <laughs> Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So let's talk about the Native American lore. So there's many tribes that have legends about Mount Shasta. Um, Some refer to it as the center of the universe or the birthplace of all life. So Shasta is where Gamokumuk. I I can't say it. What is that? Gamokumuk? Gamokumuk. I was close then. Okay, Gamokumuk. <laughs> Shasta is where Gamokumuk, the creator, resided according to the, the Modoc people. Now, there's this, this myth as well. It's called the Sky People myth, where there's like this, this, what would you call it, concept of not going above the tree line. It's like you're not supposed to go up the tree line because it's reserved for Sky People. So I don't know what that means, but I guess essentially that's, you know, you wouldn't go above the mountain because that's like where the sky people are. Yeah. Now there's. I, uh, I saw that there's another term for the sky people. Uh, they're also known as the Lemurians or the masters of wisdom. Yeah. The, the Lemurians are interesting. We'll get into them for sure, but kind of people throw them around all over the place. Mm, but yeah, okay. you're right. It, for sky people, it can relate to that as well. But there's these like stone carvings at what's called petroglyph point. And there's carvings of, you know, just regular things like animals and stars and stuff. But there's also carvings of what people claim are sky people. So if you can look this stuff up, there's like these strange, like weird people like carved in and it looks strange. It doesn't look like a normal person. So like these sky people, they're claimed to live in the spirit realm. But another thing, it's just some people would be like, you know, like ancient aliens. It's, it's like ancient UFOs that like came down and like interacted with the, you know, the Native Americans at the time. And they just were like, oh, these are the sky people. Like, is that possible as well? So there's some kind of like, there's weird UFO tangents because of that. Um, One of the other myths is that Mount Shasta is inhabited by powerful spirits specifically there's this there's these two spirits there's lao and skell so the klamath people believe the mountain is inhabited by skell who descended from heaven onto the summit of the mountain and then skell fought the underworld spirit leo using hot rocks and lava what's cool about this isn't this not like an active volcano so like i'm wondering did people see of volcanic eruption seeing like lava and just attribute it to like spirits and it's like kind of like an oral tradition of a volcano eruption yeah i it's mean kind of neat you could kind of see that if like you have ballistics coming out um it's kind of like a giant is throwing them a giant that you can't see so like a spirit yeah yeah i could see that so i thought that was kind of interesting now, coming out of the Native American lore, there's also Bigfoot. Like, Bigfoot is... Here's one thing. Before we get into Bigfoot, so, like, if you see more than one Bigfoot, what's the... Is it Big Feet or Big Foots? <laughs> um, or is it just one? There's just one. Kind of like Moose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, there you go, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that's just how it goes. But the thing is, foot's already a word. Yeah. So I don't know. I just don't know what would you like big foots. 
I don't know. Sasquatch, Sasquatches. That one works. <laughs> Maybe we'll just stick with that. So anyways, the, the Modoc people, they have a word for Bigfoot. It is Matagami. And Matagami means the keeper of the woods. And it is believed that the Matagami protect the woods around the mountain. And some claim that the Matagami are essentially, they're just Bigfoot or Sasquatch. They, the, the descriptions are essentially the same. So since the 1920s, people have claimed to see large beings in this area, and they've thought that this was Bigfoot. I have a, a quote from this guy named Taylor Tupper. He's a, a Modoc Indian of the Klamath tribe, and he had the following to say about Bigfoot in the area. He said, quote, Bigfoot have been in existence as long as our people have. I haven't seen them myself, but maybe I wasn't chosen to see them. I have different gifts. End quote. I believe there was also a sighting of a family of yetis or sasquatches or big feet at the old ski lodge on Mount Shasta. There was a, a male, a female, and a juvenile who was said to have wide amber colored eyes. Interesting. So there's some of that. There's some Sasquatch lore as well in this area. I don't know. Kind of interesting. Now this is where let's t- this is where we're going to get into some the giants and Lemuria. This is going to be quite the section. It's it's this is crazy. We have talked about giants before, and we had the giant of Kandahar episode. I believe that's in our Patreon library. If anyone's interested in listening to that, we also talked about Lemuria in our Agartha episode. So there's references there. So I'm not I'm not unfamiliar with the word, but obviously not an expert on what, what the hell's going on here. But it's claimed that an eight foot tall skeleton was found near Mount Shasta. So some think that this is a giant, and it's claimed that that skeleton was belonged to the race of people known as the Lemurians. So let's talk about this. There's this dude, JC Brown. He has this story. And he claimed that he found Lemuria in an underground cave in 1904. So J.C. Brown, this is a real person. He worked for a gold mining operation called Lord Cowdery Mining Company of England. And he was sent to Mount Shasta to explore for gold. Because he works for a fucking gold mine. They're looking for gold. They want to mine some gold. And gold is sick. Gold. So they discovered... (laughs) The, he discovered the entrance to a cave and he hiked into it for 11 kilometers, which is crazy already. Like, yeah, that's a long hike. You have to be like really interested <laughs> in like getting to the end of the cave. Like I would not, I would be like, no, nah. no, nah, there's no, yeah. <laughs> I'm bouncing. Like, but he went after, 11. Yeah. After one kilometer, just like in a cave, I'd be like, get out of here. I'm not one of those like cave diver or oh, whatever yeah. it is where they like push themselves through like the smallest possible holes that shit's scary <laughs> <laughs> you don't push yourself through the smallest possible holes you're not a glory <laughs> hole guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah freaks uh, me no. out <laughs> yeah yeah i know uh, <laughs> um so <laughs> he said he witnessed evidence of an ancient lost city uh, when he was down there. He, he came, like, after that 11-kilometer hike, uh, he found, like, statues and shields of gold that were, like, 10 feet high. There was, like, hieroglyphics, uh, chambers, old machinery, and, like, 7 to 10-foot-long tall skeletons. So it kind of looked like there was, I don't know, some kind of civilization of giants there. A bunch um, of Shaquille O'Neal's yeah. walking around. <laughs> yeah, it's just like a basketball team or something that was killed. <laughs> the Globetrotters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's where they put Kobe. <laughs> yeah. just like, oh, jeez. Uh, um, so he didn't tell people initially, but he came out and he covered the entrance up. But after reading... This is him. This is J.C. Brown. So, like, he comes back and he starts reading this book. It's called The Lost Continent of Mew. And it describes Lemuria. 
And when he came across that, he's like, oh, maybe, maybe this Lemuria is what I came across. Like maybe I found like this lost civilization of Lemuria. So apparently the Lemurians, now this is, this is, take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt. This is where like, we're kind of, it's Mount Shasta. Like it's, we're going all over the place, but now we're really going to go all over the place. So apparently the Lemurians were at war with the Atlanteans in <laughs> ancient times. <laughs> and that's just, yeah, that's just a known thing. Apparently, 1899, there's this book, it's called A Dweller on Two Planets, written by Frederick S. Oliver. And the book was channeled to him via automatic writing, visions, and mental dictations by a spirit calling himself Philos the Tibetan. So this guy writes this book, and this is where like all the information of Lemuria and Atlantis comes from, is because this guy channeled the info from some spirit. In ancient times, the Lemurians and Atlanteans were the dominant cultures on the globe, both having advanced technology and science. But I guess Atlantis was like slightly more advanced. So um, they had like anti gravity ability to alter space and time, aircrafts and submarines. And <laughs> I just find it fun. Like submarines, like that was like, that's the advanced technology. I mean, for the sky people, they had no need for the submarines. No, so. they didn't. But they should have, because when the Great Flood came, it killed them all. Well, they yeah, if ready. they're at war, you want to attack their home, too. Yeah. If they got fucking aircrafts and anti-gravity shit, you got to be able to attack them, too. So really bad part on the Lumerians. Yep. Stupid Lumerians. <laughs> 25,000 years ago, the Lemurians warred with Atlanteans after the Atlanteans attempted to take them over. Remember, the Atlanteans are more advanced, so they kind of have the upper edge. Uh, there was a nuclear war. This disrupted the Earth's tectonic plates, which messed up the magnetic poles, which led to a great flood, which wrecked and killed everyone. Interesting. This is like precognition or something of a future episode. <laughs> Whoa. Holy shit. Or a past episode? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work out, but some crazy shit's going on here. Some synchronicities. Um, 60 million Lemurians were killed. The Romanian Atlanteans evacuated to the inner city of Agartha. Shout out to Agartha again. That's episode 76. If people are interested. It's like a hollow earth, inner kingdom, something like that. The, so anyways, the remaining Lemurians, they fled to Mount Shasta and established a city called uh, Telos, which stands for, it's also known as the City of Light. So the Lemurians are claimed to sporadically be reported wandering the area of Mount Shasta. So they're like seven feet tall. They have long, flowy hair, um, often clad in sandals and white robes. They have extended necks, like a giraffe, maybe not quite <laughs> as long. <laughs> like just like I don't know, like what's a dog that has a long neck or something? Like they're not like super long, but like long enough. Something like that. I don't know. They have glowing skin. They're thin. They wear golden jewels. And people say that they wander around in the area. Now, just keep following. This all comes back together. Right now, we're just describing um, what Lemuria could be. 1932, this guy, Edward Lancer, wrote about being told about a tall, tall men from a sunken civilization where that was known to like come out and like patronize local stores. So the person would like come in like this, you know, like these seven feet tall beings with these long necks and shit. And they'd buy enormous quantities of sulfur um, as well as a lot of salt. And what was interesting about this, these people, they would always pay with gold nuggets. So they'd always use gold to pay for whatever they were getting. And like, obviously it's gold. So like it completely exceeds the value of like what they were buying. Yeah. And this is this is this Edward Lancer guy, nineteen thirty two, like in the Mount Shasta area, saying that these people would come out to like the locals and like buy shit with gold. 
Before we continue the episode, if you're enjoying our resplendent podcast, the people you hang out with probably will too. Do us a solid and please pass on this episode to your social media friends on Facebook, Twitter, or other platforms. We would definitely appreciate your support. I'd also like to take this time to shout out some of our valued listeners. Shout out to JDentiDesco1, Florida underscore Johnny, TruckerTom2014 for reaching out on Instagram, sending positive vibes your way. Also, shout out to Will C. Zap, Prevera, Aaron B underscore Romero, Striking Starboy, Jua Palooza, Phantom underscore Green, High underscore Chiefstis, Nikki K R Hansen, Dirt Metal Ranch, Charm Assist, Juicy James, She Archer, and Sparky underscore 419 for liking our stuff on Instagram. We appreciate all of you. To everyone else, please feel free to submit your topic or drink recommendations at www.theswervepodcast.com. Be good karma and vibes with all of you back to the show. Now, apparently also tied to this, there's a Hawaiian legend that says Hawaii was once part of a land structure called Mew, also known as Lemuria. Now, if you remember just a little bit earlier, I said that JC Brown, the miner who went into that 11 kilometer cave, he came across a book called the lost continent of Mew and he read it and he's like, Oh, maybe that's what I came across. That also kind of ties to like that Hawaiian legend where there's like this land of Mew that was also Lemuria. They kind of all go together. Hmm. Okay. So JC Brown, the gold miner guy, after hearing all these kind of stories, especially, you know, the, that one that was like channeled and shit, I guess. He's like, maybe I did come across Lemuria under Mount Shasta. So 20 years after discovering the cave, J.C. Brown and a man named John C. Root, they assemble a team of 80 people in Stockton, California. (laughs) Um, (laughs) The Diaz brothers. (laughs) (laughs) Just like their grandfather or something. (laughs) Go slap the shit. Shit out of these Lemurians. They go to have a look. And this is real. Like literally 20 years later, these guys actually like assembled an 80 person team. But what's crazy. So like, they're all they're ready to go. They're like, lead us to the cave. We're going the day of the expedition. JC Brown never showed up and he was never seen again. And that's real. Hmm. It's like, it was in their newspapers and shit. Like, yeah. so that's kind of crazy. It's like, he was some think it was like a, either a fraud but I don't know how he benefited from it being a fraud or that he was erased or taken by a UFO or the Lemurians or something like to, because he knew the location. That's hmm. kind of some of the things that come out of it. But that's like a pretty crazy thing in the area of Mount Shasta is this idea of these like giant Lemurians from like an advanced civilization. It's like an access point or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. I mean, so I don't know if I can trust JC Brown. No, I don't know. It just seems weird. Like, sure, he disappeared. Okay. A lot of people disappear, start a new life, move out (laughs) east. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You can never trust a gold digger, (laughs) is the moral of the story. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Got to be careful. You heard it here on the Swerve podcast. Never trust a fucking gold digger. (laughs) Do you understand? That's the moral of anything. (laughs) Or the Lemurians. (laughs) Uh, Keep the Lemurian story in your mind because I have I have a great terrifying tale that we'll save till the end. I don't know. It's it's made me shit my pants. (laughs) I'm doing the podcast right now with shit in my pants. Anyways, let's let's talk about some other things about Mount Shasta. So there is a a lot of UFO sightings here. Um, I just have in my notes so many sightings. (laughs) Like, (laughs) just there's just a lot of sightings, man. Like, uh, people see things coming in and out of the mountain. Um, 
so they're they're there's something exiting it's like a point maybe it's a uh up to a portal maybe it's lemurians coming in and out who the hell knows but there's something happening the locals believe that ufos hide in the clouds and come in and out of the mountain through a portal so going back to the lenticular cloud formation that natural formation that occurs on mount shasta i don't know is that just some kind of is that some kind of simple cloaking device mm. so deliberately UFO? placed yeah yeah or not maybe not deliberately but just oppor- offers an opportunity to exit and enter unknowingly yeah i guess you know it's like oh look at that ufo and it's like no it's a cloud hmm. even if there was a ufo you might just be like no it's a cloud you know because there's clouds that look like ufos there common commonly i don't know yeah. i thought that was an interesting little parallel maybe like the acceleration and the deceleration of the ufo is hidden by the clouds so they could just get enough speed or just slow down enough to make it into the entrance or portal whatever yeah hmm. now in 2008 this was kind of a crazy one a notable Mount Shasta UFO. People said that they saw what looked like a glowing jellyfish above the mountain, and it appeared to have fire inside of it. Uh, that report actually made it to the Mount Shasta Herald. It's a, <laughs> a huge publication in the United States. The Mount Shasta Herald. I did a see lot the people, picture. It looked crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah, like a it's, sunset in one of those lenticular clouds. Yeah. Uh, so I have a I have a quote here. This is another lifelong resident from Mount Shasta. His name is Dick Carey. Uh, <laughs> so Dick Carey, this is what he said. Quote: I really don't believe in flying saucers, but I do know that something weird was happening. End quote. Yeah, man. So Dick Dick Carey. Something weird's happening. Hey, you got a license to carry that, Dick? <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do, actually. He's a hunter, so. <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> I can't believe we live in a society where, like, people can have that name. And it's just <laughs> fine. Yeah. It's just fine. It's like. Or like, how it could be, like, both a first name and a last name. So there's somebody out there named Dick Dick. <laughs> Didn't Dick we squared. do a topic on that? <laughs> I don't know. I think there was a guy named Dick Dick. <laughs> I think he was in the UFO community too. I remember that was, we made a joke about that once. Oh, I maybe it when. was before my time. I think so. It might've been Richard Doty episode. There was someone named like Richard Dick or something. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I could be wrong. I don't know. This could be a, I don't know. I don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't know what's happening, man. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> so the Duns, let's move on. <laughs> the Dunsmuir couple, they saw a spacecraft hovering over the St. Germain Foundation property in 1991 while lounging in their hot tub on their back porch. That's another famous little notable case in Mount Shasta. And there's this other guy, his name is Brian Wallenstein. Or is it Wallenstein? <laughs> or Wallenstein <laughs> or, Wein- or Wallenstein <laughs> yeah or Weinstein <laughs> <laughs> his brother is Harvey Weinstein um, so Mount Shasta this guy uh, he wrote this book it's called Mount Shasta Sightings it has reports from local law officials and forest service employees claiming to have spotted a strange object in the sky And I guess that's just a popular book. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, from local law officials. That's what I have to say. So there's some UFO shit in that. Sometimes UFO sightings are mistaken as lenticular clouds, as we've alluded to. In 2020, there's a great example of this. People Google 2020 lenticular cloud Mount Shasta. You will find a huge UFO cloud over top of the mountain. It actually looks, looks fucking sick. Yeah. Apparently, there's like about 
3,200 residents of Mount Shasta, so quite popular. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty big city. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess yeah you can just go there and pay in gold which is sick that's awesome i wonder if they accept bitcoin <laughs> <laughs> no the lemurians came out and they paid in one bitcoin <laughs> for like a pack of salt <laughs> yeah that'd be so sick they're stuck in 2008 <laughs> <laughs> um so Okay, I want to transition out of the UFO alien shit and talk about some mysterious disappearances that are notable from Mount Shasta. This one is nuts. This one is, this one's fucked. I'm going to, I got to finish this drink for this one. You got to finish Edna's lunchbox. That sounds dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I I just finished Edna's lunchbox um, and it was... It was delicious. <laughs> it's like that one fucking dumb show on TLC. Uh, what's our buddies always talk? Milf Manor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, for listeners who don't know what we're talking about, there's a shitty TLC show where, off topic for a second, where a bunch of moms and their sons all show up on an island and they like, Right, it's like a blindfold reveal, and they're like, holy shit, our sons are here. Oh shit, our moms are here. And then it's they they just hook up. What the fuck? You never heard of this? No, I've Banner? heard of it. I just never uh like paid any attention to yeah. it or looked into like, it. Like they don't they don't hook up with their own mom, they hook up with the other moms. Okay. But like the yeah, premise is sense. insane. <laughs> it's insane. Hmm. It's insane. That's and I was just cool. wondering. I, I wonder if Edna's if Edna's lunchbox is associated with that. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But yeah, it's fucked up. Can you imagine if it was like dads and daughters? No, yeah, they fucking be couldn't. Weird. Because they would just they would just kill each other. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like. Anyways, <laughs> as the world burns, and this is as the world burns, let's talk about mysterious <laughs> mysterious disappearances. <laughs> Let's talk about Grandma Cappy's story. This is crazy. So 2011, there's a, a young couple and a three-year-old. The three-year-old goes missing. Uh, he's a boy. He There's like a massive five-hour search. There's whoa, dozens. whoa, whoa. Are you assuming his gender right now? What? <laughs> you could what? just say a three-year-old. He doesn't know whether what? he's a boy or a girl yet. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> I don't know. Man. So, uh, anyway, I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 young human entity went missing, and there's a massive search. There's dozens of trained professionals combing the area, and they can't find anything. They're literally combing through the area and they can't find anything. But then they hear, um, they hear the kid, and they can like find him. So they find him, but it's weird because they hear him in a site that they previously searched. So it was kind of weird. And this isn't where this this isn't the punchline. This is just the setup. This was a success. But several days later, there's a very weird event that occurs. The boy's grandmother called Cappy, he says that he likes this Grandma Cappy better than the other Grandma Cappy in the woods. This is what the boy says. He likes the other Grandma Cappy better. So there's, he's referencing like there's something he came across or something. Yeah. The, the, the boy says the other Grandma Cappy took him to a cave in the woods where other people were there too but they were frozen in place. He said that the other Grand Macapi was nice, but then asked him to defecate on a piece of paper. <laughs> the real Grand Macapi had camped in the same area recently since this story unfolded, and she claimed that she blacked out 
woke up face down in the dirt. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just thinking, uh, (laughs) I thought you were going to (laughs) say she woke up face down. She woke up face down in that pile of shit on the paper. (laughs) (laughs) Isn't that a fucked up story, man? (laughs) And it was confirmed to be the boy shit. (laughs) Perfectly preserved for seven days. (laughs) Isn't that fucked up? What are the chances? (laughs) <laughs> so crazy. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it's pretty weird. <laughs> <sighs> okay, fuck. Well, I don't know if I can top the story now. I guess starts. <laughs> Might as well just leave it at that. <laughs> he basically tells his grandma that he shit in the woods. <laughs> and then a week later she falls face first in it. Like, I fucking hate that grandson. <sighs> yeah. What did I tell you about shitting in the woods? <laughs> and he's like, the old grandma was nice to me. She didn't yell at me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fucking awesome. Anyways, I'll I'll attempt to finish this, but <laughs> she <laughs> so she's face down in the dirt, blacked out. And she notices a puncture wound in her back. And her friend that she was camping with had a... (laughs) I'm going to need a minute. (laughs) What's happening? What if, like, the friend woke up to with the same piece of shit? (laughs) Just how big was this kid's pile of shit? (laughs) They wake up beside each other. Yeah. That was a crazy night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's why it took five hours for them to search for the kid. He just <laughs> took a shit for five hours. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, God. He took a shit and fell in it, and then they found <laughs> it. They're like, oh, that's just a pile of shit. So they didn't look hard enough, and they <sighs> climbed out, and he's like, I'm over here. That's when they heard the kid. And he's like, I'm done. Like, oh, there he is. <laughs> there he is. And the grandma and her friend woke up in a similar position. Blacked out, face down in shit. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, fuck it. Let's move on. The grandma Caffey story, it creeped me out. Now it's just hilarious. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Okay. This guy, Carl Landers. This was a 1999 event where he went missing. He set out to hike Mount Shasta to summit with friends. Disappeared out of nowhere in a clear, open place. And he was very experienced, so this was, like, not normal. The National Guard searched the area with infrared sensors. They couldn't find anything. There was no signs of a body, no signs of clothes. He was just completely gone. And this is, like, just one of those weird events. It's kind of like the missing 411 where you have, like, a experience you know mountaineer or a hiker or hunter and they just disappear so it's kind of like a missing 411 call out he just went missing near mount shasta and it was very strange it was like yeah. in the open hmm. according to what people say um and this another thing because we're talking about missing persons um jc brown technically went missing mysteriously before he could lead that team to that cave of lemuria so like I don't know. Was he what happened to him? I don't know. Now, I want to transition out of missing persons. There's there's more you could talk about. You could get into that. But I want to get through all the aspects of Mount Shasta. Have you heard of Count St. Germain? I haven't, no. Okay, this is fucking dope. So Count St. Germain is also like kind of a part of this religious cult thing. And I'll, I'll try to explain it. So there's this guy named Guy Ballard pun unknowingly (laughs) he was hiking mount shasta and he encountered a small pile of shit and fell face down (laughs) into it (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> no, Never, he's just I, saying that you can't believe a guy named Guy. <laughs> no, he just wants attention. He's like, I fell into shit too, guys. Like, <laughs> yeah. His name's Guy Dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like, what? It's true. It's like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't trust anybody named Guy. Not even Guy Fieri. <laughs> Who's Guy Fieri? The dinner, the dive, uh, fuck, the diners, drive-ins, and dines. It's like a chef, popular oh, shit. food I network I miss host. It. Yeah. I don't know. I don't watch the food network, I guess. Mm. I don't know. Um. Anyway, so this, <laughs> I'll, I'll be serious here. I want to get to the story. The guy, Guy Ballard, he's going through Mount Shasta, um, and he encounters a man who introduces himself as the Count of St. Germain. Now, the Count of St. Germain was a real person. He was an alchemist. Some claimed he achieved immortality. What's crazy, Count St. Germain shows up in conspiracy theories all over the place. He's kind of like some weird Count guy that like mysteriously is young all the time. He always appears 45. And there's like, if you look through historical records, if you believe this conspiracy, there's claims of him going as far back as Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So like this, <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, he's coming up all over the place, and he he came up in the 1970s, which is when this this this. Uh, it was recent, like in Ma- the Mount Shasta shit. So what's interesting in the 1930s. Um, this guy, Ballard guy, when he came across, across Count St. Germain, he told him to make a cult that basically is what happens. So like, it's called the, I am activity movement. And when I say I am, it's like the letter I, and then a M. So I am activity movement. And I guess this was like a religious movement set up by guy Ballard and his wife, Edna Ballard? <laughs> Holy shit. Edna's lunchbox. How'd that taste? <laughs> Holy shit. It's like I'm essentially Eskimo bros with Guy Ballard. <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. The synchronicity in this episode is unbelievable. Anyways. You didn't do wow. that on purpose? No, dude. I swear uh, to God. No. That's pretty cool. <laughs> dude, that, no, it's crazy. Yeah, I didn't wake like, up face down in a pile of shit on purpose either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I started my morning. Yeah, how I, yeah. What a coincidence. I also woke up <laughs> in a tiny piece of shit on a piece of paper in a cave. <laughs> Did you do that on purpose? <laughs> no, it's just in the research. <laughs> Uh. Whoa, dude, the universe. <laughs> um, so here's the thing, which is crazy. So this is like before social media. The I Am Activity Movement had 1 million followers in 1938. Were there That's even that many people alive? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very similar to the Theosophy Movement. Funny enough, we break keep bringing it up the agartha episode we talked about the theosophy theo sorry theosophy movement um not a great name for your movement for people who have a lisp <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um but in any case the movement believes in the existence of a group called the ascended masters so this is a hierarchy of supernatural beings that include the original theosophical masters that include Jesus Christ, Al Moria Khan, Matraya, and in addition to there's there's like twenty other ones. There's like twenty masters of ancient wisdom. They're called the ascended masters, and this was originally described by the Theosophist called Helena Petrovana Blavatsky. Do you remember her name from? Yeah, again, yeah, I do. She came up, yeah. So she's back. So they believe that these ascended masters can teach humans to raise their vibrational levels and thus pass freely between Earth and the eternal realm. So it's Mount Shasta is literally the origin and creation of this movement. So like this whole I Am Activity movement that I was just talking, like it created that, and they believe in like these ascended masters and shit. Hmm. It happened at Mount Shasta because of 
Count Saint Germain, this immortal dude, just came by and was like, "Hey, you should do this," and the guy did, allegedly. Damn, kind of a crazy story. Um, I have this is just a quick note. I have there's a mysterious hole. So there was a 60 foot deep hole that appeared in the side of Mount Shasta randomly. And there's like some articles on this, like news articles. But I just thought that was crazy. Like just one day there was just a 60 foot hole just out of nowhere. And it's still there. Um, I, you know what? I don't, I would assume they would fill it up because it would be, I mean, people are blacking out, falling down face yeah. first and shit. <laughs> you can't have a 60 foot hole there. Um, yeah. So, but this is, just, this is like one of those things. This is, this was a real event. It was. Um, reported on there's a mysterious hole in mount shasta now Hmm. so it's a crazy place i wanted to transition next as we end this out i have two stories they're two strange encounters they're strange tales from the internet about people and their experience at mount shasta and i combed the web and these were the two best ones i could come across that are fucking insane the best one I'm going to save for the end, but let's start with this first one. Uh, this is Strange Encounter number one. So there was this guy named Joshua, and he was hiking with his dad on Mount Shasta. And he came across large boulders arranged in a circle, and also smaller rocks arranged in patterns and circles kind of along their hike. So they didn't really think much of it. They're just like, oh, people probably arranged some weird boulders and like stacked rocks and shit. But where the story gets weird is during the hike, they encounter three people during the hike. Maybe not too crazy, but we'll we'll see where this goes. The first, it was a father and son. So the first two that they come across, it's a father and his son, and they meet on a steep incline. And they kind of just stop and say hi. They just like chat about the trail, you know, like how's your hike, that just like basic bullshit, and they yeah. move on. They look back about two minutes later and they saw that the pair was about 20 minutes further down the trail than they should have been and right they're hiking it so they would know they like look back like how the hell are they all the way over there and it was just like a quick little thing and they don't really think much of it like this guy joshua and his dad they just kind of acknowledge the weirdness and continue they reach uh the top of a cliff and they see another strange arrangement of rocks And they're kind of arranged almost like gravestone style. So they're arranged in rows this time instead of the circles and and stacks and stuff. They reach that point, um, but they needed like climbing gear. So they're like, you know, let's let's head back. We, We can't go any further at this point. So they turn around and they see a man standing amongst the rocks staring at them, like these gravestone style rocks. He's got a button up shirt, cargo shorts, and a brimmed straw hat. What's weird when they're looking at this guy, this is how Joshua describes this, he said there was no facial features. So he said that they were at about a distance where they should be able to see the man's face, but it was just like flesh, like a skin face. Hmm. And they're staring at this guy. He, Joshua points this, you know, strange dude out to his dad. The strange dude ducks behind the stones, like, like playfully like like a child like trying to hide and like peering out and shit and then joshua says he was out of it for a moment because like this is weird and he said that he said that his dad said that he had just started walking towards the hat man and his dad was like calling out joshua josh what are you doing where are you going and he was just like kind of in a trance a trance and like when he came out of it he was standing at the edge of the cliff. The hat man was gone. Um, and the only way he would have to like go through them to get to the trail, but he was gone. So this was like some kind of like potential spirits or like a, some kind of, I don't know, entities that they came across from other realms on Mount Shasta. Yeah. That was his story. And it was, it's crazy. It kind of reminds me of, we talked about the black, the black, what are they called? The black stick men? Black stick men, yeah. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of that a little bit. Hmm. 
so I don't know. It was just a creepy story where he comes across this like strange shit, and it doesn't really add up. So he kind of thought he's like, "What is this? Is this like spirits, demons? What's going on?" Oh, J. C. Brown. <laughs> yeah, it's J. C. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was a weird, strange encounter. This next one, this is this is <laughs> where I shit my pants. And <laughs> <laughs> um, good, the good news is it's contained, and no one's gonna black out and trip in it. <laughs> It's contained on a piece of paper. <clears throat> In my ass. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So this one this one is okay, this one's crazy. I'm just gonna get through it. So the person who wrote this report, they said that they were hiking. And they described the day as very beautiful. There was a clear sky, squirrels and birds making noise. You know, just like typical outdoor sounds and shit. They reach a small dried up river. And, you know, basically the nice day, all of a sudden this like the chirping and the squirrels, all that just stops. It's like a sudden silence. So there's no there's no wind, there's no birds, there's no animal noises that kind of all just suddenly stopped. The person was saying they could hear their own footsteps, like it was that quiet. But what was strange, it felt like they were being watched. But even more so, like it wasn't quite just like being watched, it was more like they were being studied. And suddenly, they started to hear something out of nowhere that sounded like an angelic humming or like a song without lyrics, just like a very pleasant kind of noise. But it also sounded strangely electric, like it was coming from like telephone lines or something, but like a very, you know, like divine angelic sound. Now they looked towards the sound and saw someone or something looking straight at them. This was like, it was like a, like, like a ghost completely white looked like they were perhaps wearing a robe, but they could not see hands, feet, or a face. It was just like this white being. They said that this obviously wasn't human. It had an oval face. The body had weird textures like porcelain and like a, like a silky fabric. And they were just in complete shock and terror. They started walking backwards slowly and then the thing like tilted its head like it was curious and they could still hear the angelic hum like the whole time this is happening so they look behind them to see if it's clear and they might be able to like book it and get the hell out of there and when they look behind them and then they look back like the sound suddenly stops and this like weird white being is just gone and they just ran as fast as they could and got the fuck out of there and all like it just sounded like a normal forest with animals and birds and they got to their car and just popped in and drove away i have a quote from this they said quote i've never had anything paranormal happen to me in the past and i've honestly always been very skeptical of stuff like that but this experience has left me questioning a lot of things i don't think i want to go back on that mountain I've even had a nightmare about this exper- experience, and I'm not even sure what I saw or what to call it. End quote. That's the story of Mount Shasta, man. I don't know what the hell that is. Pretty crazy stuff. Like, all it's silent, and then you just hear, like, this pleasant mechanical noise, and there's just, like, this large white being with a face, and it's just like... Wah! as you stare at it and it tilts its head i'd be like fuck this yeah it's safe to say i'm not gonna go hiking on mount shasta anytime soon or ever yeah yeah how about we hop into final thoughts yeah let's do it okay well let's start with you izzo What's just your general vibe on this whole Mount Shasta thing? Is there anything that I said that 
has merit or is this like kind of like this a skinwalker ranch type thing where it's kind of everything at once yeah initially that's what i was thinking about is skinwalker ranch how everything just kind of happens there but yeah honestly i can't believe any of the lumerians or not even the ufo stuff okay maybe like the ufo stuff i can kind of see but uh, the other one that I kind of find believable is like Bigfoot or Sasquatches or Yetis even like that one I could probably see happening. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? I, I, I kind of think I'm in the same boat. It's just like one of those weird places where there's just a lot of weird stories. Um, I don't know. I'd, I'd check it out if I was there. If I, if I was ever caught dead in California. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But I check it, it just out. seems like there's always like a small town somewhere that has this draw of like paranormal paranormal shit that just happens, keeps people intrigued. But yeah, I don't know. At least with this one, there's a nice mountain we can look at. Yeah, I think my take. I think it's just a lot of legends, a lot of folklore. It's a lot of just like internet shit. Like the stories I just said. There's no way to verify that those are true in any way. Yeah, but like they kind of. I don't know, like a creepy vibe. They have a very strange vibe and it just kind of amplifies the the lore of everything. I mean, yeah, I don't really have an in-depth final take on this one. It's just, it was cool. Like, we didn't even get into, like, the reptile people, other ghosts shit. There's a yeah. lot. Yeah. It's My favorite topic. story was the Grandma Cappy. <laughs> I can <Also>, tell. Also... <laughs> If I ever have a kid that starts doing creepy shit at the age of three, I'm going to punt them. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah. I'm not dealing with that. <laughs> no. Now I know why fathers walk out all the time. Yeah. I like <laughs> the other father. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> the mom's just like banging a bunch of guys. Yeah. The one that mom calls daddy. Yeah. It's just like, what? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> Is this a horror film? it's a horror film yeah it's a no this is a porn (laughs) yeah i like the other father (laughs) that's so funny um that story in general is funny if i was any good at animation like i'd just do a short clip of us talking (laughs) about the grandma cappy story (laughs) yeah i know it'd be good um <laughs> it's still yeah it's still good having said that let's uh i don't know let's just roll out i don't have anything else it's a short final thought yeah. what else can you say it's everything it's a grab bag of conspiracies it's yeah. fun um that's it i think it's just fun that's my take let's uh let's thank sidestepping the sun a canadian rock band that made the intro and outro music to the podcast also Still unofficial sponsor of the podcast, El Yucateco Hot Sauce. I want to shout them out. It's just a great hot sauce. I use it um, basically well, most days, and it's habanero-based, so it's it's spicy. It's not shit. It's not bullshit. It's got a lot of flavor, and you can flavor up anything. Um, I'm doing a lot of steamed vegetables right now, and steamed vegetables taste like shit, but if you put El Yucateco Hot Sauce on them, and some salt uh it's actually it's 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 really good so my point is you can be healthy using el yucateco hot sauce and still get flavor and there's no calories so i just yeah unofficial i would say <coughs> listeners if you would like us to help us in this endeavor please reach out to el yucateco on our behalf we have a bunch of listeners who have done this in the past and uh it's good they they know who we are they actually know who we are, and we're moving the needle. So that's all I have to say about that. Is it what else do we have? One more time, I want to mention our Patreon. So if you've enjoyed this episode, you can catch more of them at patreon.com slash the swerve podcast. We have two tiers, a one dollar ride the wave tier. So for three cents a day, you can get access to new episodes every month, exclusive episodes every month, and uh, like the entire library of episodes that we've released so far. And then for $3, you can join the 
slap the ass tier and that'll give you shout outs on the podcast you'll get access to those bonus episodes but you'll also receive all the episodes both main and patreon episodes a few days before anyone else so you'll receive them on wednesdays rather than or you'll receive them on sundays rather than our typical drop time of wednesdays so <clears throat> having said that if you're interested in any of the drinks we feature on the podcast you can find the drink recipes at uh, on our instagram posts our facebook posts and our twitter posts so follow us on those social media platforms we are there um we also do like topic voting sometimes too so there's you can follow us there to interact with us you'll be notified when our episodes release every wednesday and it's just a great place to interact with us what else do i have to say we have sticker packs or sorry you look like you had something no you could go ahead on the sticker packs yeah we have sticker packs so right now um as long as our supplies last we will be giving out three weatherproof stickers uh uh, all we ask is that listeners leave a five-star written review on Apple Podcast or leave a review on Spotify now that you can leave reviews and five-star reviews on Spotify. Just screenshot the message or snip it or whatever you need to do and send it to us and we will mail you out for free these awesome weatherproof stickers. And if you want to see what they look like, again, you can find them. We, we feature them with all of our drink posts on social media. So they're there. What else is though? Uh, we also have a website, so the swervepodcast.com. And on that website, you'll find all of our links. Um, you'll also find a form that you can submit with an alias or not, uh, but you can give us your drink and topic recommendations there. It's a nice way to centralize things. Um, look back on our email for, for them. Uh, but yeah, just interact with us on there as well. Tell us what we should research next or tell us, um, if there's any more Edna's lunchboxes, we can <laughs> we can go to town on. <laughs> yeah. All right. With that, slap that ass and ride the wave. I thought you were gonna say <laughs> she woke up face. <laughs> <laughs> she woke up face down that pile of shit on the paper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Isn't that a fucked up story, man? <laughs>